Let's start with the origin and a clear definition of what is SPC, Statistical Process Control, and SQC, Statistical Quality Control. It goes back to the 20s when Walter Schuert, working for Bell, was observing a lot of variability in the process of building parts for the phone system. And he came up with this idea that variation will be caused by two different sources. He wanted to differentiate between random fluctuation, those fluctuation that you have to live with, this variation which is inherent to the process, and intermittent fluctuation that could be due to external forces being applied to the process and that could be linked to assignable causes. So he wanted to build the tools that will help users to differentiate between those two kind of variation occurring in the process. And looking at the trend, he developed those standardized tests that would help the user with control limits to differentiate between random fluctuation and intermittent fluctuation. Now let's get on the same page about some definition about process control. We will say that a process is under control when it is stable, predictable and repetitive. If it does deviate from its target value, that would be the cause of a random variation but will still be under control. Now we're going to admit that a process becomes out of control when it deviates from its target value, but that's the cause of unassignable causes, some external forces being applied to the process. So the outcome is the same. The process is shifting towards some different target, but one is due to random variation, the other one is due to assignable causes, and you want to identify the difference between the two. So in the end, the goal of process control is for sure to ensure the stability of the production and to reduce as much as possible the ratio of rejects bad product being made by the process. A quick note about having your process under control and making good product. As we said, being under control means that you're stable, repetitive and somehow predictable. But if you're not producing good quality, I mean that defeats the purpose of, of producing anything. So you will need to make some changes to the process, maybe redo some testing or recalibrate some meters and things like that, but you have to keep in mind that to minimize those random fluctuations, the first thing you need to do is make sure you're under control. So even though you're maybe not on target and you don't have good production, the first thing is to get the process under control and then maybe slowly try to move it towards its target value to get the maximum out of it. So intermittent fluctuation we talked about earlier have been classified in two types of categories by Juran and Deming. We have first sporadic problems just occurring once due to a sh change in the process or some breaking in the process and you will see them and they will be abnormal but they will never happen again. The other one are chronic problems and then the one that really drags your production down on, on a daily basis. So you want to work on them and solve them because they're recurrent problems. Let's get to the definition of statistical process control and how to apply it. Basically what you want to do is to compare current data against control limits. These control limits are derived from process standards, specification that you get from design data, or that could be previous process data from the history of the process. So whenever you had a good production rate, good quality, sustainable production, that could be where you define your control limits for your SPC churn. Those control limits need to be defined when the production is stable and at least for a reasonable amount of time. If you want to go back to this process state where you had good production or co compare against that, it has to be something meaningful from the process stand of you. In practice, you will compare real-time data against those control limits, either derived from standard or historical data, and you will validate your prediction against statistical quality control tests, again checking for the quality of the data. What are the benefits of implementing SPC? The first thing is the validation of the capability of the process to operate within limits. You'll see whether the process is stable or not, and whether it can stay within the limits you set up earlier. 
if the process doesn't stay within limit then you will be able to detect and anticipate what will be non-random variation to the process then you have a measure of how good you are with the process using the mean, the deviation and the CPK indexes and for any process optimization initiative you might develop you will have a sound matrix to actually quantify the improvement you may want to do on your process. In the end we'll talk about SQC and how you can qualify the quality of the product using a specific implementation of SPC. Statistical quality control is essentially the same concept as statistical process control the difference being is that we're working with quality data instead of working with process data. So quality data just qualifies the product when process data just get us information about how we run the process. SQC will ensure that your production is compliant with the customer requirement and sometimes trying to inspect every batch of the product is very expensive and often unrealistic. If I'm building bolts I could not afford to measure all those different bolts one by one to make sure they're all good. What I'm going to do is just sample a few bolts per batch and given the quality of those bolts I'm going to asset the quality of the whole batch. So CCOS statistical quality control can help estimating the quality produced by inspecting only a few sample of a batch and asset the quality of the whole batch. To summarize, we can differentiate between all those different sorts of variation in the process. So there will be variation, that's for sure. Part of it will come from random variation and we will have to live with it. And hopefully it will be that most of the variation will be random. Other variation is going to be assignable to due to some sporadic problems or chronic problems. Well, with the aid of SPC, I'm going to try to get rid of those problems. Essentially, chronic problems would be the one I will focus on because they are happening most of the time. Sporadic ones will show up and disappear kind of mysteriously. And as long as I'm working with random fluctuation and sporadic problem, I can assume that I'm going to be still under control, which is really the goal of running my process.